as part of um, their test. Um, I'm, I'm going to ask you to um, think about how we can adapt the tasks. Um, and I'm going to show you a simple um, controlled practice activity, um, which I've taken from um, Language Hub Intermediate. And, and this is a controlled practice activity um, with uh, modal verbs. So here, the students have to choose between the two options. Um, what other things can you do? How can you adapt this activity to various levels um, um, so that the students benefit? Please send your ideas into the chat. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to wait just a few minutes to see what you are saying. Uh huh. Okay, gaps for stronger students. Very nice. Uh, words in brackets, gaps. Mm -hmm. Take out options. Yes. Uh huh. Okay, so yes. That's good. That's that. Choices. Yes. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna show you what I've done um, with this task. So, as you said, um, we can remove the options uh, in general, and the students have to fill in the gaps. Um, we can turn it into an error correction task. Uh, you can see the example. We have it to be competitive to have fun at sport. We can jumble up words, and the students have to unjumble them. Um, but here we shift the focus. If in the original task the students have to work with the meaning and choose the correct words in terms of meaning, here we're focusing on the form. We can turn the sentences into prompts um, and we can include the modal verb in the prompt or we can remove it um, from the prompt depending on the level of difficulty we want to have. Um, and we want to, uh, we could dictate the sentences with gaps and replace the gaps with the word banana. And the students have to write the sentences and uh, fill in the gap. Um, so, for example, this would sound, ah, uh, we banana be competitive to have fun at sport. This is actually the most difficult type of task um, because it's always more difficult to um, correct the errors from listening. Uh, rather than when we see the errors. So this would work um, very, very nicely for stronger students. Um, so how do we do this? Um, I have a class of 15 students. Um, the weaker students um, choose a piece of paper of the green color, which is the easiest, and they have the original task, choose between the two options. Students who are in the middle um, choose the yellow tasks, which uh, contain, um, say, uh, jumbled up words um, or contain gaps. And the strong students uh, get a blank piece of paper and they're all working at the same time and I dictate the sentences um, to the stronger students. In this way, I'm also controlling um, the pace at which we're moving through the exercise. Um, I can see the questions in the chat. You are going to get my slides with all of the ideas. Um, they're going to be sent to you, so don't worry about that. Yes. Um, <clears throat> Um, so we, we, we've spoken about adapting uh, grammar, vocabulary tasks, error correction. Um, we also need to think about the skills tasks and, and um, lots of other things. So like for listening and reading tasks, for example, um, I've taken this listening from, you know, from Language Hub, but this time this is pre-intermediate. And we have this listen for keywords um, uh, task, um, which is, you know, a very standard. And, and a very general task. And in order to do a number of things, um, so say two or three options, and we do so make us more more of a Uh, which kills the whole purpose of listening, of course. 
uh, but it helps the weaker students stay motivated and with time they can um, progress to actually just doing the tasks. Um, give weaker students the script with the answers underlined after they have listened. Um, that's uh, one thing I insist on as um, possibly even essential um, in a listening lesson because we always have to the, the students who are weaker and in feedback, they haven't got um, our ideas. Um, and sometimes I like um, sending the listening track to the students' phones, emails or something like that. Uh, and they all listen individually, especially in an online environment that's possible, but in a classroom they take their headphones and they listen um, however many times they need. Um, and if they need to pause and make notes, um, that's also possible. Um, if, if we think about um, a reading task, you see a text here, and I see we're running out of time, so I'm just going to tell you my ideas. I was going to ask you for some of your ideas. Um, so for the stronger students or for fast finishers, we can ask them to design additional questions to go with the text. Um, we can ask them to respond to the text by drawing a picture, summarizing it in one sentence, um, writing up an ending or something like that. Um, for weaker students, we can let them uh, read the text aloud um, um, and uh, while, while the stronger students are actually uh, doing something else. Um, <clears throat> if we have fast finishers, um, I like asking them to look through the text and find some words which they would like to learn. And they highlight the words in the text and they uh, look them up in the dictionary um, <clears throat> and they share that with everyone. Um, <clears throat> I, as I said previously, in feedback, I always insist on giving um, out the answer keys. And in reading, I insist on, <laughs> insist. I, I, I like asking um, the teachers and myself like doing this. I like giving the text with the answers um, underlined there so that the students can later look at the text, look at the answers, uh, look at the questions and see why the answers are what they are. Um, a couple more um, ideas for you um, for a speaking lesson. Um, one thing that's very important to do, um, which um, we often tend to forget about, is preparation time. And both weaker and stronger students need preparation time uh, because preparation actually helps them uh, <clears throat> be more fluent um, and more accurate um, as well. Um, so as part of preparation, um, the stronger students will be making notes of the ideas, but the weaker students will probably get prompts with some of the language they need to use and will make notes of the ideas um, or the other way around. So depending on what we want, we will provide weaker students with more information and stronger students with less information. Like I said previously, for speaking, um, Weaker or shy students should work in smaller groups and bigger groups should work in, uh, and stronger learners should work in bigger groups. Um, if we mix the students, uh, which a lot of you have said, um, we like, um, I quite like assigning roles so that a stronger student can sometimes be a manager, conversation manager, um, and keep control of who says uh, what or how much the people say. Um, so if they see there is a shy student, uh, they should prompt this student. And in this case, they, they, of course, get a piece of paper with some ideas on how they can prompt um, the weaker students to do that. Um, a couple more ideas for a grammar or vocabulary task. Um, um, it, just, I'll just comment on some important things. Um, do more error correction with stronger students um, because we can push them and we can get more from them. And probably less error correction with the shy or weaker students because this will demotivate them. Um, a very common classroom management trick, the fast finishers get an answer key and check themselves. Um, and then they check the other weaker students. Um, and, and sometimes, um, I mentioned personalization earlier and you asked me about it. Um, if we've done a controlled practice task, like the one, remember, with uh, where they had to choose modal verbs, uh, <clears throat> stronger students uh, can take some time to uh, rewrite the sentences so that the sentences are true for those students, 
or so that those students can relate 